It's been two, yes, two whole years since my video on the best Synology NAS for your team. And there's been loads of updates and new models coming out too. So it seems kind of bonkers for you all to be looking at that old video when I can show you the latest and greatest right now. I've got a separate video that you can look at about all of the benefits of using a NAS for your team up there at the start of the QNAP video, at the start of the Synology video. There is a ton of benefits to using a NAS. So pro tippers, let's dive straight into our first Synology NAS right now. Now, I do just want to point out that I'm not being sponsored by Synology for this video. They are not giving me anything to review. No money has changed hands. But I do have some affiliate links down in the description if you choose to buy a NAS that just help support the channel. It's at no extra cost to you. This video is based on my personal experience with Synology NASs, but you should make your own decisions based on facts that you find out too. I always like to encourage people to try one out, rent one before going and investing into a NAS, just in case it's not for you. Now, those of you that remember my first Synology video will be thinking, hang on, this kind of looks like the first Synology NAS from that video. And that's because it kind of is. The old model was a DS720 Plus. This is the DS723 Plus. It's the 2023 update to that model. And it has some big improvements. This small desktop two bay NAS now has the ability for 10 gigabit ethernet connectivity to allow your editors to edit 4K footage in real time. You might wanna check out my video on why 10 gigabit is useful or necessary even for multiple users trying to edit 4K footage at the same time, right up there. But also this NAS has the ability for M.2 drives for an SSD cache or extra SSD storage pool for fast access to media. With up to 417 megabytes per second read and 225 megabytes per second write, this NAS has the ability to allow yourself and you know another assistant like editor to be able to edit 4K footage at the same time in real time if you opt for 10 gigabit connectivity. You would need to use proxies or a smaller codec if you were going to be editing over a gigabit ethernet connection. The thing that I really like about this NAS is that it's a great option for larger teams to be able to have remote editors to be able to store like hot storage locally for those editors to be able to edit with and use you know a cloud storage provider or a central NAS back at the headquarters as your cold storage and everything synced between. You, you don't need your editors, your designers, whoever may be working remotely to have everything, every project ever worked on locally. They can just choose the projects they're working on right now and you still have the knowledge that all of your media is stored safely elsewhere. I actually have a video on how to do just that up there. This unit is perfect for a small two to three person size team or bigger teams that are looking to have remote designers and editors um, without having to have buy external hard drives all of the time and you know not being able to have that sync functionality. The DS723 Plus retails for around about $450-450 pounds. Yes, you have guessed it. This is the 2023 update to the DS920 Plus model from the last video. So this is the DS923 Plus. This is a four bay NAS with all of the characteristics of the old DS920 Plus, but the 2.6 gigahertz AMD Ryzen 1600 now comes with four gigabytes instead of the old two and is upgradable to 32 gigabytes, which I highly recommend for multiple users accessing this NAS at the same time. Like the two bay NAS, this NAS doesn't have 10 gigabit ethernet connectivity built into it, but it does have the ability via a PCIe card to have 10 gigabit connectivity. And it does have those two M.2 slots for SSD caching or SSD storage pool. If you do go down the 10 gigabit connectivity route with this NAS, this throughput you can get from it is 592 megabytes per second read, 562 megabytes per second write, which already outclasses SATA SSD drives. This is a great starting NAS for small to medium sized teams of around about four to six users. And the DS923 Plus retails for around about $600, 600 pounds. Now, this NAS may seem like quite a big jump from the DS923 Plus I just spoke about, but when you're getting above four bays, you want a little more bang for your buck because I'm gonna hazard a guess that A, you have a lot of data 
and B, you probably have a lot of people that want to access that data too. And that's why we are firmly in the realms of 10 gigabit connectivity built in that allows for your editors, your designers, to be able to work with 4K media in real time. So the first NAS in this category is the DS1823XS Plus. This 8-bay NAS is the first of the XS Plus series, which have better under the hood capabilities and performance, which should outclass the Plus series NASs we've just spoken about. And straight off the bat, this thing has 3,100 megabytes per second read and 2,600 megabytes per second write when connected via 10 gigabit. Even better yet, and for future proofing yourself, this NAS can also accept the 25 gigabit ethernet cards that are now coming to market and allow for even more users to access that data or for higher bandwidth capabilities for the users you already have. It has those two M.2 slots, as pretty much all of the NASs that I've spoken about up to now do have, for SSD caching or a storage pool. Now, performance-wise, this NAS has a 64-bit AMD Ryzen V1780 B. That's a 4-core 3.35 gigahertz CPU, and it has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is upgradable to 32 gigabytes, which I, again, I highly recommend doing when you have this many users accessing your NAS. You can store, if you fill all of the bays, you can store 144 terabytes of raw data in this NAS without using any sort of RAID setup. And yes, like all of the Synology's NASs that I'm mentioning, it does have that cloud sync functionality too. The DS1823XS Plus retails for around about $1,800, £1,900. Jumping even further from the desktop tower format NASs that we've just spoken about, we're now looking at rack mounted NASs, which support 10 or more users. These NASs need to be housed in a comms cabinet and ideally in an air temperature controlled room, which is usually an air conditioned comms room somewhere in your building. You'll also want to place this NAS in your comms cabinet somewhere close to your network switch because it's not easy to move these things around. The RS3621XS Plus is another of the XS Plus NASs and is a step above the DS1823XS Plus. It has an Intel Xeon D1541 8-core 2.1 GHz CPU with 8GB of DDR4 RAM, which is now scalable to 64GB. And again, I highly recommend upgrading your RAM. Whether you need to go to 64 gigabytes is completely up to you, depending on how many users you expect to be accessing this NAS, but the more users, the more RAM. That's basically how it works. We also have not one, but two 10 gigabit connections coming out of the back of this NAS, which allow for 10 gigabit speeds to be shared between more users by bonding the two into a 20 gigabit connection. Let's not get confused here. This isn't 20 gigabit speeds. This is 10 gigabit shared over two lines so that you can push the bandwidth to more users. And once we get into these rack mounted formats, we also have the benefit of redundant power as well. So if there was a catastrophic power loss, you could have a backup PSU to be able to power the NAS so that it can safely shut down and you won't lose any data. Additionally, you can even add in more 10 gigabit ethernet cards via PCIe slots into this thing so that you can have even more bandwidth sharing that 10 gigabit speed. You know, you could potentially have 30 users accessing this NAS all getting 10 gigabit speeds. That's incredible. If you didn't want to add in another network card, you could of course use them for more SSDs uh, via M.2 cards to have a bigger storage pool or SSD cache. The RS3621XS Plus retails for around about $4,600, £4,300. Now, you heard me mention that these NASes can sync to cloud storage providers and act as, you know, local remote storage facilities for your editors and designers. And yes, they absolutely can. And it's a great way to work remotely. I have a video on it just up there. And if you're an After Effects user, there are even more benefits for you because you can actually use your NAS to set up your own small render farm on your local network. Check out how to do that up there too. Now, if those weren't the cherry on your NAS shaped cake already, then check out all of the benefits that you could have by using a NAS with your video team and using it as your shared storage right here.